Example two, graph y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 2. Notice once again, x squared, y first, so that's going to be a parabola. We should expect to get one of these curves. Um, first thing we do is x of b is equal to. Negative b is going to be negative 2 over 2a, 2 times negative 1. What does that make? Negative 1. Makes positive 1, right? Negative 2 on top, negative 2 on the bottom. Number divided by itself makes positive 1. So the x value of my vertex is positive 1. That also means right off the bat, watch what I can do. AOS, x equals 1. As soon as I know what the x value of the vertex is, that's the axis of symmetry equation. x equals that number. All right? What other number should I pick over here? Negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0. 2, 3. 2 and 3, right? Pick two numbers smaller than 1. Pick two numbers bigger than 1. If um, this equals a fraction, let's say this equals 1 half, pick 0 and negative 1, 1 and 2. Pick whole numbers, pick integers. If that equals 17 39ths, 0 is right less than that, 1 is bigger. All right? You don't have to pick like 56 39ths. So you don't have to go up by 1 at a time, just like that. You won't get the symmetry though, because that's not exactly halfway between. So the, the value here and the value there won't be the same, but it's a lot easier to evaluate that than it would be to evaluate 56 39 squared and whatever else. So, again, this one has to be picked. The rest of them are your choice. Pick friendly numbers. Pick two smaller, two bigger. All right? Now, once I've got those five numbers, I need to evaluate. Now, this is where uh, people start messing up a little bit, so let me just caution you about a couple things. First off, x squared is positive, always. Right? The minus sign is not being squared. So if I got a minus in front of my x squared, x squared is positive, but the minus sign changes that result to a negative answer. Right? 2x is whatever sign it is based on the sign you're looking at, and plus 2, of course, just plus 2. So if I'm looking at these three pieces, I'll do that in red, this one green, this one blue. All right. And I'm evaluating negative 1. So I'm doing x equals negative 1, and I'm trying to evaluate y. Right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mentally square these numbers, then I'm going to put a minus in front of it because that's what is happening. X is being squared, then it's being subtracted. So negative 1 squared is 1, make it negative. Negative 1 times positive 2 is minus 2, and plus 2 is just plus 2. All right, so if I evaluate all that out, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. If I go with X equals 0, The answer is 2. I like picking 0. Cancel, cancel, constant. 0 comma whatever this number is. Alright. X equals 1. So, again, I'm evaluating. What's 1 squared? And then make it negative. So negative 1. What's 2 times 1? Plus 2 and then plus 2, right? Yeah. 2 plus 2 minus 1 makes 3. All right, next one. What should the answer be for the next one? Sure. Why? Because they're symmetrical. Because of symmetry, right? We should expect the next answer to be 2. Um, what if we're wrong? What if we had the wrong number here? Then we're not going to get symmetry, right? So what I would do personally is I'd go ahead and evaluate x equals 2. So there's x equals 2. I want to put it into here. Uh, 2 squared is 4. Make it negative. 2 times 2 is plus 4, and then plus 2. What does that equal? 2. 2, right? As soon as I get the symmetry, as soon as I verify the symmetry, that means that this is the correct vertex. I see the symmetry happening. I can go ahead and anticipate the symmetry for everything then. All right? So once you verify symmetry, you know that that's going to be there. Yeah, if you want to put the 3 in, you sure can. Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. All right? So I get my five points, and I plot those five points. Negative 1, negative 1 is right here. 0, 2 is right there. 1, 3 is right here. 2, 2 is right here. And 3, negative 1 is right there. Notice this one's turning downward, right? I'm going to connect the dots with a nice parabolic curve. I'm not going to count off for Archer Street. Try and make it curvy, though. Well, I, 
uh, I've seen people like, kind of straight them up like that a little bit. That's not very good. Make an effort at least. Get, get a little curvature to it. I've been doing this for graphing it as a teacher for 23 years, a uh, student um, six or seven years before that. So <clears throat> I've got a lot of practice and mine still aren't very good. All right, so I'm not going to count off for artwork here, but do try and make it somewhat curvy. And then I'm going to plot my axis of symmetry, which is just a vertical line right through the vertex. You get a ruler and you go dot, 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 dot. That's how you graph the axis of symmetry. All right. And there it is. Notice that one turns downward, the first one turned upward. Let's investigate that. Okay, and it's got to be somebody on the PJ again because they've already take, taken the parabola section of GeoTrig. Um, take a look at the two equations. Get all this stuff out of the way. Compare the two equations to each other and see if there's something telling about that that might let us know if we can determine. Austin, what do you think? The second is negative, that's why it's going down. Okay. Very good. What we have here is the lead term, the highest power term. Whenever you're looking at polynomial functions, the highest power term carries the most weight. All right? You're squaring a number, it makes that number grow in size much larger than the rest of the number compared to each other. So, um, if the lead term is positive, you're going to get an upward turning parabola. If the lead term is negative, you're going to get a downward turning parabola every single time. Right, that can be a guaranteed thing. So um, that's another thing you can look for to verify, hey, I'm doing this right. If you see a negative x squared, you get your points legally through proper technique, and the points create a downward turning parabola. That should give you a little bit of belief that I probably did this right. Or just like this, I got the symmetry happening. I was expecting symmetry once I saw that. That gives me some uh, feelings of I'm probably doing this right. So that's things you can look at while you're doing these problems to verify that things are going well.